Amendment Case 1. Our history, it says, this is a 17-year-old male new patient who comes to the office today. So right there tells us those three elements, right? Where our patient is seen and what they're seen for and, and what type of patient. So it's a new patient who's coming for the office for an office visit. So we know our coding range would be that 99201 to 99205 just from that first sentence. And then it says, right after he got punched in the right side of his face after fighting at school, mother is concerned because he is a diabetic and has a couple of lip lacerations, also complained of some transient blurry vision, which has since improved. The patient states that he did get hit on the right cheek area. Immediately following this, he had some blurry vision in the right eye, which slowly has improved, is near normal now. He also notes, that he had a cut on his right lower lip and upper inside of his right lip as well. No other complaints. Now the examination. So the examination is when the, the physician is actually touching the patient, right, where the history is just verbal information about the chief complaint. So the, the examination, the visual acuity is 20 out of 40. Both note that patient normally wears glasses but did not have them for the examination. Head is normocephalic, P-E-R-R-L-A, E-O-M-S intact. Fundoscopic examination is normal. There are no hemorrhages. Good sharp discs bilaterally. The discs appear clear bilaterally. TMs are normal. Nose is without discharge. He has some tenderness and erythema in the right cheek where he was hit. No obvious swelling. Right upper lip, he had a one to one and a half centimeter laceration. Superficial skin edges are not opposed, not bleeding. The teeth are in good repair. The right lower lip above the vermilion border has an abrasion. He opens and closes the jaw well. No TMJ tenderness, neck is soft and supple. Now, laceration repair. So lidocaine is injected around the laceration and the wound is cleaned, explored, and irrigated with saline solution. A simple one-layer repair of the lip with one forovicral was performed. The diagnosis is upper inner lip laceration requiring simple suture repair, lower lip abrasion, right cheek contusion. The plan, discussed my findings and diagnosis with the mother, I reassured her that the laceration was minor and only required two sutures to close adequately. She was advised to keep the area clean and to make a return appointment to remove the sutures in seven days. He may rinse with some hydrogen peroxide and water, watch for signs of infection, follow up if any, continue to check blood sugars as stress can sometimes make these go off. Use some ice on the lip and right cheek, follow up if any problems. Okay, so from this, remember with our codes, we're telling a story. So our diagnoses always must justify our procedure that's called medical necessity. So our diagnoses in this case are that our patient has, if we go to the physician's diagnosis line, upper inner lip laceration, and then lower lip abrasion. There's our second diagnosis and then a right cheek contusion. And then we also need to show where this happened, that the patient was in a fight at school. So that's as on our external cause codes. And then for our procedure, we, ha we have two different procedures here, right? The patient came in for a visit and then had a minor procedure at the same time. So remember that our coding guidelines tell us that if we code a procedure, the e and is typically included and wouldn't be separate. However, the e and in this case is separate because the patient is being looked at for many things, including his diabetes, and the lip laceration repair is secondary to that. So we're going to code the lip laceration repair that requires a simple suture as well as the e &M visit for the office visit. And then because the e &M is subsequent or incidental to the surgery repair, 
you put modifier 25 on the ENM to show that yes, it is separate and we need to report both. Okay. So let's first start looking up our diagnosis codes. If you want to take out your ICD-10 CM code book, let's start with diagnosis one, upper inner lip laceration. So if you go to your book, lacerations are called wounds. They're called wounds open. So go to your ICD book, go to W. In my um, 2018 book, I'm on page 328. So if you go to wound, open, and then we're going to go down to lip. And it tells us to see for laceration, see laceration lip. So we can go to laceration lip, which is on page 207. And you should see the code S as in Sam, 01511. And then there's the check mark, which means we need an additional character, right? And we always look up in the index and then verify in the tabular. So take your S01511 and we're going to look that up in our tabular. Which for me is on page 944. And it tells us in red that we need a seventh character. There's a red check mark that says seventh in a box. So that lets you know that an additional character is needed. And then to find the character, you want to go to page 942 where category S01 starts. So if you go to S01, it tells us this appropriate seven characters to be added to each code from category S01. So since the first three digits of our code are S01, this applies to our code. So our code was S01.511, and then our fifth or our seventh character choices are A, initial encounter, D, subsequent encounter, and S, sequela. Okay, so initial is the first time they're being seen. Subsequent is when they're coming in for a follow-up or an additional visit. And then sequela is a late effect when they're coming back in after the acute phase has healed. So ours is obviously initial. It's the first time our patient is being seen. So we're going to pick A. So our diagnosis code is S01.511A. Now, let's go to our second diagnosis, which is the lower lip abrasion. So what do you guys think the main term is that it is going to be? Remember, the main term is usually the condition, the disease. It's not the anatomical site. It's the what, and then you go to the where. So the what is an abrasion, right? And then the where is the lip. So I'm going to go to abrasion and then lip, which is on page four in my book. The other thing I want to point out really fast right here is remember our coding guidelines tell us that you don't code a minor injury at the same location you coded a major injury. So a laceration is more severe than an abrasion. And if you have a laceration and an abrasion at the same site, you only code the most severe, so you only code the laceration. But in this scenario, the laceration's on the upper lip and the abrasion's on the lower lip, so we would code both. But if you had, say, a laceration and an abrasion on the left cheek, those are at the same site, and you would only code the laceration. So remember that guideline. So back to abrasion and then lip. 
you should see the code F00.511. And again, it has our check mark in the index. So we know we have to go to the tabular to find that seventh character. So let's flip to S00.511. And we'll see <clears throat> page 942 in my book. The code description is abrasion of lip. Again, we need to add the seventh character. So we, <clears throat> we flip to category S00, where the category starts on page 941. And it has the same choices that our laceration code has. A for initial, D for subsequent, or S for sequela. So we're going to choose A. So our second code would be S00.5, oh, sorry, um, that's the first code. So it would be S00.511A, yeah. And then now we have to code the right cheek contusion. So again, our main term there is not the site. It's the condition, the disease, the injury, which is contusion. So we're going to look up contusion. And then we're going to go to cheek. I'm on page 72 in the index. And you see we can pick cheek or internal. Well, ours wasn't internal. It wasn't inside the cheek, right? It was on the outside of his face. So the code we're going to look up is S00.83. And again, we have our check mark letting us know we are going to have to add another character. So let's go to S00.83 in the tabular. which is on page 942 in my book. Okay, now what I want to point out here when you guys get to S00.83 in the tabular, you notice how the box is blue with the seventh instead of red, like the ones we just saw. Okay, well the difference is if we look down at the bottom, right, the bottom of our book, it has the key for what every um, symbol means. The blue check mark with the, the seventh in it is a placeholder alert, and it has the X. So what that's telling us is we add an X to get to the seventh character, and then we add the seventh character from the seventh character choice box. So in this example, we have five characters in our code, right? S00.83. So to get to the seventh character, that means we add an X. So we, we would go S00.83, X, and then we pick from our seventh character box, which is at the beginning of the category, so at category S00, so the page right before. Again, it's the same choices, A, D, or S. We're going to pick A for initial. So our code will be... S00.83XA. So it's very important that you guys always come to the tabular and follow the instructions, right? That box is an instruction for us to check our seventh character and add an X to get to the seventh character. Now we need to code uh, that this happened at school. So if we go to our external cause code index, which remember is in the back of your regular index behind the table of drug and chemicals. So in my book, it's on page 397. Hopefully you guys all found that. Okay, and then 
um, once you're at the external cause index, you're going to go to place of occurrence. And place of occurrence was a school, right? It says right after he got punched in the right side of the face after fighting at school. So place of, of occurrence, we're going to go to S to school. And he is... 17, so that would put him in high school. So we would pick Y92.213. And then we want to show how the injury happened. We showed where by saying it happened at school, but we want to show how it happened. So in the external cause index, we're going to look up fight. So go to F and then to fight. On page 420 for me, and it says fight, hand, fist, foot, C, assault, fight. So now let's Go to A to assault, still in the external cause index. And then if we go to assault, we can see brawl. Right? Like, um, and it says, hand, fist, foot, unarmed. So, and it gives us a Y04.0 and has the check mark, so we know we need to add something to it. So now flip to your tabular to Y04.0. Okay, we have the same blue check mark box, okay? This is a perfect example. So I'm on page 1198. So in this example, our code Y04.0 needs a seventh character. But we only have four characters right now. So we're going to have to add an X placeholder twice for character five, character six, to get to the seventh character to add our seventh character choices, okay? So our code's going to be Y04.0XX, and then we have to go find our seventh character choices for category Y04. So if we flip to the previous page, under the heading Assault at the very top, you should see Assault, and then in parentheses, X92 to Y09. And it gives us our seventh character box there in pink that says the appropriate seven characters to be added to each code from categories X92 through Y04 and Y08. So that's us because our code started with Y04. So again, it's the same choices, A for initial, D for subsequent, or S for sequela. So we would, of course, add A for initial. It's the first time our patient was seen. So our um, unarmed brawl or fight injury is Y04.0XXA. Okay.
So that's all our diagnoses for that case. Now we need to look at our procedures. So if we go back to this template, we know that our ENM code is going to be one of these, okay? So remember, if you think back to building an ENM code, we have what's called the three key components, okay? We have to determine the, the amount of history, the level of exam, and the medical decision making that took place during that visit to award our ENM code. So the history, again, is positive or negative comments verbally about the patient's health and injuries and chief complaints, right? The exam is when the doctor is physically touching those body systems. In the history, the, the physician's just talking about them. In the exam, the physician's actually touching them, feeling them, examining them. And then the decision making is the number of diagnoses, the a number of data to review, and the complexity or risk of that to the patient, okay, and the treatment options. So let's look at the history. HPI is the history of present illness, and that's one to three elements to get a 99201. Okay, for a 99201, and then for a 99202, you also have one to three history of present illness elements, plus you have one review of systems. So the history of present illness is about the condition that's bringing them in, right? History is talking about it, the location of it, when did it occur, how severe is it, all of those things are history of present illness. Review of systems is, again, talking about where the injury or illness is, talking about the systems impacted. So for a 99201, you don't have to have a review of systems. A 99202, you have to have at least one. Then if we keep moving up, a 99203, you have four history of present illnesses, two to nine review of systems, and one to two past family or social history. Okay, past family or social history is if the patient has a, a past history of a surgery or a diagnosis, if the family has a past history of surgery or diagnosis, social history is you know, if the patient's a smoker or a drinker, uh, where they work, those kinds of things. So you'll see 99204 is the same, except for the re review of system is 10 plus, and the past family social is 3, and same with 99205. And then the differences really come with the exam, right? If we go down to the exam portion of our e &M code, for a 99201, the physician must only look at one body area or organ system. 99202, they have to look at two to four body areas and organ systems. 99203 is five to seven, and 204 and 205 are eight or more. And then our decision making. Remember, decision making is the number of diagnoses, the amount of data to review, and the risk to the patient. Okay, so straightforward medical decision making, meaning it's a very simple diagnosis. There's not a lot to do to treat it, and it's not, the patient's not going to die if they don't get treatment. Okay, 99201 and 202 are straightforward. 99203 is low, 99204 is moderate, and 205 is high. So remember when you're coding your ENM code, you have to determine the history, the exam, and the medical decision making. And for new patients, you have to have all three of those met or they can be exceeded to assign the code, but you can't have one lower. If you have one of those elements lower, you have to assign the lower code. And what that means, if you guys remember back to 211, so what I mean by that is say I have a detailed history, which would put me in a 99203, 
a detailed exam, 99203, but my decision making is only straightforward, 99202. So in order to assign a 99203, all three of my elements must be met or exceeded. So since my decision making was straightforward, I would have to drop down my history and exam to the 99202 level to meet where straightforward was. Again, you can exceed the content, but you can't decrease it. So even though I had a detailed history and a detailed exam, if my decision making wasn't low, I can't assign a 99203. I have to go where all three elements meet. Does that make sense? Do you guys remember learning that? Now, in an established patient, that's not true. Established patients, you only have to have two of the three key components met. And the reason is most established patients already have a history on file. So every time the patient comes in, the physician's not going to go great detail on the history because it's already on file. So established patients, you only have to have two of the three key components but new patients or in the ER, um, inpatient settings, all of those, you need all three elements met or exceeded to assign the code. So with that, let's go look at our documentation again to see how many HPIs we can find. Okay, HPI again, history of present illness. So if we go back to this, we're gonna go to history so our patient's a 17-year-old new patient who comes to the office today right after he got punched in the right side of the face after fighting at school. So there's two things that that is telling us, right? So if we go look at this, HPI 1 to 3 for 99201, 1 to 3 for 99202, or 4 or more for 203, 204, 205. Okay, so we got punched on the right side of the face, fighting at school. So there's two, right? Mother is concerned because he is diabetic and he has a couple of lip lacerations, also complained of some transient blurry vision. So that's four right there. We, we know he has lip lacerations, blurry vision. The patient did state that he got hit on the right cheek and has some blurry vision in the right eye, which has slowly improved and is near normal. So that's something else to note, right? So he had it, but it's getting better. <coughs> he also notes that he had a cut on the right lower lip and upper inside of his right lip as well. No other complaints. So there's six HPIs right there. So if we go back to our template, we know we're going to be... HPI at the fourth left, right? So 203, 204, 205. Now let's see if we have review of systems. Okay, well, and as I'm reading this, mother is concerned because he is diabetic. So that would be a past family social history, right? So if we come back, we know it's at least a 203, 204, 205 with the past family social history because we have one that he's a diabetic as long as we have the review of systems that we need two to nine or ten plus. So if we go back to the review of systems, um, so let's see, mother is complained because he's diabetic. He has a couple of lip lacerations, so lip, and then some transient blurry vision, so eyes, Patient did state that he got hit on the right cheek, so three, and the rest is the lip. Okay, so we have three review of systems. So we would meet a detail for our history, right? So now let's move down to exam. So we're going to look at BA body area, OS is organ system. So let's see how many of these we can get. So let's go look at our examination. It says visual acuity is 20, 40, both 
Note that the patient normally wears glasses, but did not have them for the examination. Okay, so we did the eyes, that's one. Head is normal cephalic, so that's two. Pupils are equal reactive to light, so that's eyes. Um, EOMS intact, fundoscopic examination is normal. There are no hemorrhages, good sharp discs bilaterally, the discs appear clear bilaterally. TMs are normal. So now we did the ears, the head, and the eyes. Nose is without discharge, so we looked at the nose. So that's four. He has some tenderness and erythema in the right cheek where it was hit. No obvious swelling, so that's five. Um, is with the face. And then right upper lip, there's a one to one and a half centimeter laceration. Superficial skin edges are not opposed, not bleeding. The teeth are in good repair. The right lower lip above the vermarial border has an abrasion. He opens and closes the jaw well. No TMJ, tenderness, and neck is soft and supple. So neck and teeth, too. So that's, what, seven? And so detailed would be five to seven. So we met detailed. And now our decision-making would be straightforward, low, moderate, or high. So let's look at his plan, right? Discuss my findings and diagnosis with the mother, which we have three diagnoses. And his plan was to clean the wound and repair it, right? So he reassured her that the laceration was minor, only required two sutures to close adequately. She was advised to keep the area clean and make an appointment to return for removal of sutures. He may rinse with some hydrogen peroxide and water. Watch for signs of infection, follow up if any occur, continue to check blood sugars, as stress can sometimes make these go up. Use ice on the lip and right cheek. So that's really low, right? It's not straightforward because they did have to decide if they were going to suture the patient, and then they also have to take into consideration that he's a diabetic. So that would be low. So our e &M matches up. Great for 99203. We had detailed history, detailed exam, and low medical decision making. So our E&M code is 99203. And then, like I said, we're going to put modifier 25 on that to show that it's separate from the laceration repair. Because the doctor looked at more than just the lip, right? So that's why we can justify an, an office visit in addition to the suture, because he did more than just look at the lip and fix it. So now let's go to our CPT book and find our laceration repair. Okay, so in the back of your CPT book, what do you guys think we're going to look up? Mm. Remember, any kind of injury like this in CBT is considered a wound. So we're going to go to W to wound, which is on page 1090 in my CPT book. And then under wound, we're going to go, where was the wound at? Well, it was on the lip. So we're going to go wound, lip. And once you get there, we have complex intermediate or simple. Let's go back to our documentation. And it tells us lidocaine is injected around the laceration and the wound is cleansed, explored, and irrigated with saline solution. A simple one layer repair of the lip with one 4 vicryl was performed. So we know ours was simple. So under simple, you should see the code choices 12011, 12013, to 12018. So in CBT, remember, you need to look at all of those codes and determine which one best matches your scenario. So let's start with the first one, 12011. 
<clears throat> it's on page 89, and it says, Simple repair of superficial wounds of face, ears, eyelids, nose, lips, and or mucous membrane, 2.5 centimeters or less. Let's look at the next one, which was 12013 to 12018. And if you look, they're all the same description at first, but remember with CBT, the indented code starts where the semicolon is. So 12013 has the exact same description as 12011. It's just bigger, right? So it would read, Simple repair of superficial wounds of face, ears, eyelids, nose, lips, and or mucous membrane. And instead of reading 2.5 centimeters or less, it would be 2.6 centimeters to 5.0 centimeters. And then 12014, same description. Again, we just changed the size. Instead of 2.5 centimeters or less, it's 5.1 centimeters to 7.5 centimeters, right? All the way down to... Um, 12018 is over 30.0 centimeters. So if we look back to our documentation under examination, it tells us about halfway through that paragraph, right upper lip, he had a 1 to 1.5 centimeter laceration. I'm taking notes on a live lecture for my last class now. So 1.5 would be 2.5 centimeters or less. So we're going to pick 12011, right? Okay. So your procedure codes are, you're going to put the 12011 first because it's a more uh, severe code. It requires anesthesia. It has more of a risk, right? So 12011 and 99203 with modifier 25. 